Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talks Impression Show. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Impression. Impression is Art and Talks new adjunct video series that provides an opportunity for an artist to present an overview or impression of their art while also presenting one aspect of their art as well. So again, thank you so much for being with us. Let's talk about our guest for today. He's a West Virginia metal guitarist, and he's gained quite a lot of popularity on social media. And he's also a gear demonstration specialist. He'll be providing an overview of his music and he'll also be performing for us as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Warren Hughes. Hi, Warren, welcome. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi. We're so glad to have you here. Um, I have a, a question kind of um, straight away. So Warren, you are classically trained as a guitarist, uh, schooled mm -hmm. at uh, West Virginia University. I'd love for you to share, if you would, your evolution as a guitar player, um, starting from um, you know playing guitar and your interest to landing where you are now with a focus and a passion in metal guitar. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm going to take it back to, geez, I'm going to show my age here. I'm going to take it back to 1977, okay? Um, I, I grew up in a small coal mining town, very, you know, you know, it, everybody was poor, you know what I mean? It was just like, you know, um, and I remember, you know, going to my grandmother's house after, uh, you know, after school, my grandmother would come and get me. And, and uh, you know, at this time, my, my youngest uncle and my aunt, you know, stayed, were still at home. And my uncle was into like Van Halen and Kiss and Hart and um, him taking me downtown, Morgantown. And, you know, he went to the record store and bought the first Van Halen album they come out and Kiss Alive too. And I'm, you know, a little seven year old kid and I'm already like looking at the album covers like, okay, you know, and, and I hear Van Halen, you know what I mean? And then he puts on the Kiss album and I open up the album cover and I'm looking at the stage exploding and them standing there with their guitars. And I think the song Detroit Rock City was playing. And I was just, it hit me instantly right there. I was like, I want to do that, you know? And uh, so it wasn't until, it wasn't until later on, you know, till I was about, I think it was 1986. Uh, 87 or 80, 88 sometime, my uncle, you know, of course I had grown into a young man at this time. And, you know, uh, he's in the Air Force out in Spokane, Washington. And that summer, um, the Monsters of Rocket come. That's with Van Halen, Dawkins, Metallica, and some other bands that played. And that was the first concert I'd ever went to, you know. And he took me to that concert. And that summer he rented me a guitar and a little uh, Rockman soloist amplifier, headphone thingy, you know? And, uh, you know, I saw that concert and I got to see Eddie Van Halen, number one, you know? And then number two, I got to see George Lynch. He's a guitar player for Dawkins, which I, you know, he's my favorite. So, and then, you know, the next day I was flying back to Virginia. At this time, we, you know, we had moved to Alexandria, Virginia. And uh, I asked my uncle before I left, I was like, can I, you know, can I keep this guitar and stuff? Will you buy it for me? And he did. When I got back to Alexandria, Virginia, I didn't do anything else. You know, my friends didn't see me. You know, I constantly stayed in my room and played my guitar all the time. You know, and my mom was very supportive. You know, she never came in and said, turn it down or anything. Oh, I got to say this. And, and during this time, I took lessons off of a guitar player. His name was Mike Himmel. He's out, he was out of Virginia as well. Phenomenal guitar player. He was, you know, he was the first guy I ever see play all the Van Halen stuff. I mean, he was just freaking phenomenal, you know? And he would tell people, you know, he's like, you know, Warren's only been playing a year. And I know he's playing stuff now that I know guys been playing 20 years, can't play, you know? And, you know, my mom heard him saying this stuff, you know, and so she was just even more supportive. So further on down the line, I, uh, um, I lost my mom in a, in a car wreck. You know, she, she, she passed away. And, you know, time had gone by, I still played and still played. And I played in a couple of little bands and things like that. 
but uh, I started working at this music store at, at, at the mall in Morgantown, West Virginia. And they sold like keyboards, pianos. I mean, they sold some guitars and stuff, you know, but um, I was just sitting in there playing one day and the uh, professor from West Virginia University for guitar came in the music store and he was like, you know, he said, you should come do an audition at the university. Part of the thing for my mom was going to college. <laughs> you know, it just wasn't, I just wasn't that guy, you know? So he said, can you learn something or do something, you know, in a couple months time? I was like, I can, I can figure out something. So the music store let me borrow a uh, classical guitar. And I just went home and played it, you know, didn't know any theory, didn't know anything. and just kind of made up this little classical thing. You know what I mean? That I kind of made up in my head. So the two month time comes around, you know, and they're like, <clears throat> and for the audition. So I go to the university and I'm at, I'm like 26 years old at the time. And, you know, so I get to the creative arts center, um, which is the music department of West Virginia university. And, um, you know, I go to do my audition and, you know, I'm like 26, you know, there's a big long line of incoming freshmen, like fresh out of high school, just standing in line with their, you know, their trumpets and trombones and, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, so it finally, it finally, it's my turn. So, you know, I go in this room and it's, there's a semicircle of like the guitar instructor, the piano instructor, the violin instructor, the cello instructor, and the dean of the department of music. And there's a semicircle of pairs. So of course I'm scared out of my mind. Okay. So, uh, so I go in there, I sit down and they're just like, okay. Not showing any emotion, you know, very stiff, you know. And uh, they asked me to sit down and play. So I sit down and play what I come up with. And uh, so the guitar teacher, knowing I don't read music, he asked me, he said, play A minor seven chord. I'm just sitting there kind of looking at him kind of cross eyed, like, come on, man, you put me on the spot. You know, I'm already nervous and I don't read music, you know. So he goes over to, there's a grand piano in the room and he plays the A minor seventh chord and I heard it, I played it back, you know? So then they're like, okay, um, we'll get you called in about four to six weeks. It lets you know if you made it, you know? So I'm just thinking to myself, you know, I know this was a big waste of time, you know? So I, uh, so I pack up my guitar and I start walking down the hallway and totally bummed out, you know, and, the guitar teacher peeps his head out the door and he's like, can you hold on for like five minutes? I was like, yeah. So I stood out in the hallway. And so he finally comes out and he's like, come on, walk back to my classroom with me. You know, so I, uh, so I walked back there with him and he's like, sit down. So I, you know, and he's like, he said, congratulations. I was like, what? He's like, congratulations. He's like, you made it. I was like, and he, said, and he said, the good part of it is, you know, you're, you're on part, you know, you got like a partial scholarship, you know, just out of nowhere. I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't even thinking about going to college. Farthest thing from my mind, you know, uh, you know, I was the heavy metal rock guy, I wore jeans, t-shirts all the time, wasn't, you know, you know, and so I, so I asked him, I was like, you know, you know, I walked in there and, you know, I was like, what did they say when I left out of there? You know, he said, I said, because they weren't showing any emotion or anything, you know, and he said, he said, you walked out of that room. And he said, their mouths dropped on the floor. He said, he said, they could not believe the technical ability that you have and you have never had any type of formal training. So, um, so I remember uh, first day of college, Okay, and I'm walking in the door at the Creative Arts Center, and it, it was like I was the star quarterback, or that they recruited from a high school all the way across the United States somewhere, and they had told everybody about this quarterback, and, I, and it's like I'd been on the ESPN, and they've been talking about this quarterback for years. You know, we finally got him here. You know, but I wasn't the quarter, quarterback; I was the guitar player. Uh, and of course, you know, I get there and. You know, they're all standing there waiting for me to get there. And they're walking me around, introducing me to graduating seniors and, and, and things like that as the our new virtuoso. You know what I mean? And, you know, all the other, you know, stu you know guitar um, students were looking at me like, you know, and I'm just looking at them. You know, they're asking me questions of how I do like a, 
this arpeggio or that arpeggio. And I'm looking at them like, dang, you done been here for, you know, you've been here and you should know this stuff, you know, and not asking me. I mean, not really not asking me, but it, it was just kind of astounding how they were asking me things. And, you know, I was kind of looking at them for guidance. And here they are asking me, you know. So um, I ended up staying there about three years. You know, um, it was just, it just got to the point to where it was so repetitive. But you know, I, I gained a lot of knowledge. It, it, it was like, I was learning some of these pieces and I would sit there for hours and it was very frustrating because I had to go all the way back to do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do and forget everything that, that I was playing in order to get the uh, concept of how the theory works with the guitar neck or, or the theory works in general, you know? So, and, and and it was like, so I started noticing that, you know, after learning these pieces and some of these parts, I'd be, I would go back and be like, man, I've been playing this for the past 12 or 13 years. I just didn't know the musical term for it. So, so that's how I kind of got to where uh, I am as far as the schooling part. Um, the, 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 uh, as far as the uh, demonstrating for some of these companies and things of that nature, it just came from being on Facebook. Um, I, I don't really have a lot of platforms outside of Facebook because number one, I like to interact with people as far as, you know, they're asking me questions about my playing or how I do this or how I do that or how I tune my guitar. On the other platforms, it's like you can't do that. It's like they can leave a comment and that's the end of the conversation, you know? So I found it more um, satisfying for me to be able to, you know, go on a live video and somebody's asking me a question and I can actually answer them back and they can get some type of conclusion about what I'm doing, what I'm using or, or what have you. But um, I got started doing that probably about six years ago. Um, I just made a video sitting at home, just sitting at home playing and I shared it. And it got like a thousand views, the first video. So I joined over 200 different guitar oriented groups on Facebook. I made another video. Got up that morning at five o'clock in the morning before I went to work and shared that video with every one of those groups. And I got like 189,000 views on that one freaking video. So I just constantly kept doing that for about four to six months, you know, just, you know, making little videos, sharing them, sharing them, sharing them. You know, I, sometimes I tell myself, I was like, yeah, I know these people sick of seeing me, but it got kind of addictive, <laughs> you know. So I just kept sharing videos and sharing videos and sharing videos, man. And then the next thing you know, some of these companies were like, hey, do you, are you endorsed by anybody? Do you do this? Do you do that? Do you, you know what I'm saying? I was like, no, and we're going to send you this and we're going to send you that. We want you to do some videos, blah, blah, blah. So I did that for a while, you know, and then, you know, I got a chance to uh, go out to, uh, um, to California, to the NAM show. NAM is like the biggest musical instrument manufacturing convention in the world. Okay, every musical instrument manufacturer, everybody who's endorsed by these instruments, famous, non-famous, what have you, everybody is at this convention. And I can remember as a teenager dreaming, okay, about attending one of these, you know? So just being there and getting to meet some of the, you know, guitar players and people that I listened to growing up, man, it was, it was so humbling, you know? And uh, so I got to do that a couple of times, you know? And then I started, uh, I started getting kind of, kind of big headed and 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 get, getting into myself a little bit too much as far as and getting a little added, you know. And these people can't contest to this. I actually, you know, fell on my face. So, so what I did was, you know, when you fall on your face and make a mistake, man, the best thing you can do is humble yourself and apologize, you know, to. You, you know, uh, to your audience and, and you know, and just keep what you're doing what you do. You know what I mean? So this right here is kind of like a, a second coming, if you will. You know, um, you know, I've learned some things along the way of, you know, just how to conduct yourself as far as a musician and, and, and stuff like that and interacting with people and things of that nature. So, so, so some things have come along here as of late, like right now, I just got a, uh, endorsement through um you know crunch cabs and cables and there's also a guitar maker his name is Hector Soto he's out of California as well and so uh these guys have uh 
you know, offered me some, to, to, you know, a few endorsements that are needed at the time because now I play with the uh, I play with the Dark and Tribute Band here in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I reside. So, like I said, this is all like a second coming, and you know, I'm just so appreciative of you for having me on the show, and I'm so appreciative to you know all of my fans that have stuck by my side. You know what I mean? It just it means the world to me. You know what I mean? And it just it just makes me want to do that much better and to you know really get out there and show them you know, what I can do and, and, you know, make all of them proud. So that's where I am right now today. So. What an amazing journey that you've had, Warren. I think first we have to thank your uncle because that sounds like that was a very initial um, introduction to, to rock, to metal that really kind of set the stage. And then of course your mom, who was, you know, a very supportive and encouraging of it. And it sounds like Warren that just, um, opportunities just appear to you um, related to guitar and your playing as, as your story has been unfolding and I'm listening from the opportunity um, with um, your formal education for those years that, that just kind of came to you or wasn't something that you were planning. And then also with um, reaching popularity within social media, you just kind of put out a video and um, you know a lot of people saw it and then um, also with your love of connecting with other musicians, other guitar players, you know, it seems like you almost take on the role of a teacher because you like to be live, you like to see what people are commenting on, answer questions, and, and kind of like to wear that hat. Right, absolutely, man. There's nothing like, uh, you know, and, and a lot of times I always say this, you know, um, this whole thing here is not for, it's not for making money. That's not what music is for. You know, I, I say this all the time. I was, I'm, I'm like, you know, if, if I'm up on that stage and I'm playing and I take somebody's daily troubles out of their mind for that little bit of time that I'm up there playing my music, then I've done my job. That's what it's for. And that's what, you know, I wish people would tap into. You know, I mean, because I, I look at it like this. If I didn't have any material possessions, I would still have my music. And trust me, I've been in that situation where I didn't have any other material possessions, but I always had my music and that music always took me somewhere to a good place, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and another thing, man, and people don't understand this sometimes when I say this, but, you know, I wish that I could hear what they hear as far as, you know, whenever I'm playing, you know? I wish I could see what what the what the big what the big deal is. You know what I mean? I just you know, and, and maybe it's for me playing it playing all the time and just hearing it all the time or whatever. But man, I just wish I could be on that side of them, seeing me hearing what it is that is so special about what I do. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's I don't know that that's just captivating for some reason. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah, my. Uh, I come from a very, very, very musically talented family. I mean, from my grandmother to her brothers and sisters to my aunts and uncles to, I got a family of cousins, there's 14 or 15 of them. And every last one of them can at least play the piano. And I can remember going to family reunions as a kid and our whole family getting up there. I mean, I'm talking over two, 300 people. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody has been in music all their life. Not so much on the rock side, like I have, you know, changed over to, but, you know, I can remember our family, you know, we having guitar players, drummers, bass players, organ players, piano players, and that's all getting together and them getting up on that stage and everybody singing as one unit, as a family, you know, and that, and to be totally honest, that's what captivated me with music from the very, very beginning because I went to church with my grandmother all the time. And like I said, my family were the musicians in the church. So, so I would have to say that that captivated me first because I saw my cousins playing the guitar and I saw Kiss, you know? So I kind of put two and two together, guitar, you know? So that was, I mean, that was my first, uh, as far as, you know, really getting to see somebody play where my cousins and my uncle um, playing at church. And my uncle plays drums, the one that got me into Van Halen and stuff. So. Like I said, I can remember back in the 70s, he put on some Van Halen and turn that stereo up and he had his drum set in there, man, and he was just let loose, you know? <laughs> you know, so uh, so he was definitely a big inspiration, you know?
so much Warren um we still have just a moment or so before we have to wrap up the show um okay. I'd like for you to share with us um what do you think are the uh the criteria that make up a um good metal guitarist shredder what are some of like the, the main areas that they really have to excel in to, to really help them to stand out I think one of the main things is to have uh a really good sense of rhythm, number one. That's the most important thing of all, because if you can't, if you can't follow time, and a lot of the guitarists these days, it's all time oriented. You know, these kids now are playing in some, some odd time signatures. So I would say, uh, you know, just, just your rhythm is very crucial at this particular point in time and stage in the game. Um, also, I'm gonna say, you know, learn as many. I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to say learn as many. Um, I'm not going to say learn as many scales. I'm going to say learn some patterns that are comfortable to your ear and what you like. OK, and I say that for the specific reason of if you're not playing something that you like, then you're going to lose interest. OK. So I think one of the most important thing is to play something that sounds good to your ear, no matter if it doesn't sound good to anybody else's ear. That doesn't matter because that was me. I was doing stuff that I like to play, you know, and I had people coming at me, well, you should do this and you should do that. And you should know, you know, because whatever it seemed like they were telling me to do, it was, you know, it, it was boring to me. But as long as I was in my zone and in my space, I was totally comfortable and that that's motivation, you know? So I, I think those two important things will, will get you a long way in this industry these days, you know, just, just, you know, a good sense of rhythm and play what you like to play, you know? Um, and, and I, I think, I think those two things are, are, are most important. So, uh, um, and of course, um, I'll say this too. Get a guitar that works for you, you know, um, or an instrument that works for you. A, a lot of people get instruments like their favorite player or something that someone else suggests, you know, and that's the way wrong way to go about things. Get something that you feel comfortable playing. I don't care if it costs 200 bucks, just like this guitar here. You know, this guitar costs about $200. Okay. Now, I can do the same thing on this guitar as I can do on a guitar that costs $3,000, okay? It's kind of like having a Mercedes and a Ford FST, okay? They're both gonna get you or, and serve you the same person, 
per, I mean, the same purpose. You know what I'm saying? One's going to get you in there in a little bit more style, but it still serves the same purpose. So it's the same as a guitar. You know, you have your own personal touch, okay, that nobody else has. And that's where your sound actually comes from. So if I play this guitar, which costs 200, or I play free, a $3,000 guitar, guess what? I'm still going to sound like myself, regardless. So I say those things right there, you know, will get you a long way in, in, the, in, the, in this game these days. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's good advice. I like that. Really sticking to your guns and kind of following your, your intuition and what works for you. Warren, we do need to wrap the show up. Um, we'd like to thank you for being our guest today on Art and Talks Impression. Um, before we um, officially close, um, any um, summer plans that you have related to your guitar, like for example, with your Doc and Tribute Band, um, do you have some um, tour dates for this summer? And, and what else? Well, right now we are, um, we actually just formed probably about, I'll say about six weeks ago. Okay, so we are, we're just, you know, right now we're rehearsing. Um, I've come, I've got some real, you know, I play with some really great musicians. Uh, Todd Cage, Scott Campbell, and our, our bass player, Brian Weaver. I mean, I just, you know, it, it's like you go a lifetime looking for musicians like this. You know what I mean? And finally, I've, you know, found these people. So right now we're just rehearsing. You know, probably around September, late late August, September sometime, we'll probably play our first show. But already, man, it's just like, it, it just feels so good to be in a room with those guys and everything just comes together so naturally, you know? So, uh, so yeah, that's, that, that's basically it, man. That's, that's my, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. And also, you know, I'm going to be doing some demo videos for Crunch Cabs and Cables and for Hector Soto uh, that makes the guitars out of uh, California. So, that's pretty much all I have going on right now, which is perfectly fine and dandy with me. As long as it's music oriented, I'm good to go. Yeah, so. yeah I hear you. Warren, thank you so much again for being our guest. Wishing you a great summer and some wonderful uh, rehearsals with your band and kind of getting your thing going on. And we'll be on the lookout in, um, around September when, when um, you're officially beginning to play. And um, much success to you with um, all your other endeavors, with your um, demonstrations with, with your gear. And I know you keep everybody up to date with state-of-the-art uh, products that come out. And I know that your viewers turn to you a lot for different specs and whatnot. Thank you so much for being our guest today, Warren. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching Art and Talks Impression. If you are an artist and you would like to be on our show, just send an email to us at viewoftheartist at gmail.com. We'll get back to you with scheduling and information. Please stay connected with us on social media. Please like our Facebook page, Art and Talk, and also please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. We appreciate your support. All right, so we'll talk soon on the next impression. Until then, be well and be blessed.